I said God is good at all the time. Hallelujah. I'm blessed to stand before you to bring to you the word of God this morning. Amen. It's always a privilege and an honor when we come to his blessings. You can never go home with nothing. Hallelujah. All you need to do is open your heart and allow the word of God to penetrate and bring light to your spirit and you'll prosper. Amen. Today I want to speak. I don't want to call the message. Whatever I say, receive your miracle. If you want it, you can tell, say, receive your miracle. Amen. Because I want to talk about the miracle by the pool. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the miracle by the pool. So the message you can say, receive your miracle. I receive my miracle. Hallelujah. But to me, I'm saying, I'm talking about the miracle by the pool. Let's turn our Bibles to John 5, 1 to 10. John 5, 1 to 10 says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called the, pool, the Hebrew town Bethesda, having five porches. And in this way, a great multitude of impotent folk, of bright heart withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Say, waiting for the moving of the water. You can put it, waiting for the move of God. For an angel, an angel went down a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whatsoever then fast, and that then fast, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole, and whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, that eight years, say that eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Say, and Jesus knew. Preach with me this morning. And Jesus knew. His case had taken long. The important man answered him to him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. And verse 8, Jesus says unto him, Rise up, take thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was a Sabbath day. Amen. I know you have heard this word and preaching maybe on this word. Let me read verse 10. And the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is a Sabbath day. It is not lawful uh, for thee to carry thy bed. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, you may have read this scripture. It may have been preached to you. And I know some people who have been there, they would say, I know what pastor you're going to say. But I want to tell you, you don't know what I'm going to say. So open up your spirit. God brings fresh man every day. Hallelujah. God does, God does not work in what you call uh, a way that you can predict what he's going to do. He's God. That's why he's God. Amen. So we have learned that there was a pool in Bethesda and it was the time of the feast and Jesus was around. Say Jesus was around. But the Bible says there was a pool and there were impotent folk. People who are sick. People who are invalid. They were weak. And they were waiting for a miracle. Hallelujah. I don't know that we are somebody waiting for a miracle. You have been invited in one area of your life. You have been without something. Maybe you've waited for God over something for many years. And you are feeling there's no, that God may have delayed. There was a man there who had come for that eight years I've been there. And the Bible says that he would watch some people come in and get healed. And he's not getting healed. He's not having a space. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Bible says the master himself came. Say the master himself came. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, this time the master himself will do it. And then you will not be sent. Say it's the master. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be happy and preach with me today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want to go forth and bring to you what God was putting in my spirit. What God was telling me is that God does not have schedules of time. Those people were gathered there, but they never knew when God will arrive. There was no schedule saying God will come on Tuesday. 
He will come next week. And you always come the second month of the week. No. Hallelujah. The Bible says the angel will go come at certain times. Hallelujah. And so the people waited on God. And that's the character of God. God says, I will come. But you not know the day or the time. Even the time Jesus is coming back, he says, no one knows the time. No one knows when I'm coming back. Hallelujah. And he says, I come like a thief. God has a character of coming at his own time. And he comes and he wants to find us. Are we still having faith? Amen. So there was no schedule when God or the angel would come. And he would come at his appointed time. And when he comes, he would make everything beautiful. Glory to God. Jesus said, the owner of the house, if he had known when the thief would come, he would have kept watch. Hallelujah. And this is why we must we may miss it out most of the time as Christians. God wants a consistent in our lives. A consistency in waiting for him in prayer and watching. Hallelujah. God requires us or God wants us to be a people who are ready. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have prayed and God may seem to have tarried. There is a sense of lateness. But God is never late. God always comes the right time. And when he comes, he comes speedily. Say it to your neighbor. When he comes, he comes speedily. And everything changes. Hallelujah. I've come to tell you God is not running late. But he shall, when he comes, my challenge to us is, when he comes, shall he find faith? Shall you find you still holding on? Shall you find you still waiting? Shall you find you still watching or asleep? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can get that in Luke 18 verse 8. Hallelujah. Shall you find the people watching? Shall you find the people still working on their assignments? Or you'll find you to have given up and thrown your arms? You can write it down and shall read uh, 18 verse 8 but I want to go to Mark 13 verse 33 the Bible says take you heed watch and pray this is Jesus telling us take you heed watch and pray for you know not one when the time is these people were by the pool this man was there that eight years they waited and they never knew they were waiting and watching I believe they were praying Sometimes we think they are just people out there and sick and invalid and are doing nothing, waiting for the coming of the troubling of the water coming. For. No. I see a people who are praying. A people are seeking God and saying, God send your angel. And I see a people who are watchful. And I see that you needed to be very watchful. Because if you are not watchful, an angel will come and you miss out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have to be watchful and be able to discern. Be able to know that the angel has come. And be able to act. We shall see that. Amen. So Jesus is telling us, take you heed and watch and pray. For you know not when the time is. Whatever you are looking for, you know not the time is. You are praying. But God is saying, wait on God. Hallelujah. David says, I would have given up if I had not waited for God. If I did not have a reason to believe. That God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. That you will come. Verse 34 of Mark 13 says. That for the son of man. Is like a man. I want you to see how God operates. Hallelujah. He says. For the son of man is like a man. Taking a, journey, a far journey. Who left his house. And gave authority. They say authority. He gave authority to his servants. And to every man his work. And commanded the porter to watch. He's like a son of man who has gone. And he's given authority. That's what's given to church. He has given us authority. He has given us assignments. What to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible is saying, after giving every man his work, he commanded the keeper of the door to watch. Say we are watchmen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He commanded that he watch. And 35 says, he says, watch therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes or cometh. At even or at midnight or at clock crowing or in the morning. 
Be watchful. You don't know when the master will come. You don't know when your miracle will happen. But you can watch. You can stand by faith. You can wait on God and say, God, I'm not coming out of here. I thank God for the man who waited on God for that, that, that eight good years. I don't know how long you are waiting on your God to come to your rescue. I don't know how you are waited for God to manifest and you have been seeing other people receiving their miracle. You've been coming to church, a man comes and gets healed, you're not yet healed. You have come to church, somebody's door of a job is opened and you have not received your job yet. And you are saying, God, but I thank God if there is somebody who can be able to wait on God. To know that God is faithful. To know that God is good God. And he cannot deny anything from his children. Hallelujah. He gave his only begotten son. What can he withhold from you? I thank God for this man. Whatever was written in the Bible. There are many miracles God did. Jesus did. But the Holy Spirit chose some of the miracles to teach us. Hallelujah. Not all miracles are written, but those who are written, they were supposed to teach us how we can also receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have been left with an assignment. And the master is about to return. We have been left with work to do. God has given us authority and it's not for nothing. God has given us an assignment and given us the resources not for nothing. And he is saying, I am coming back. A time when you don't know. I'm coming back when you don't expect me. But Jesus is saying here. He says, I can come in the midnight. I can come in the morning. I can come at the cover crow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he's saying, watch you therefore. Be alert. Be awake. Continue walking. Continue waiting on God. Continue. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, Lest coming, suddenly he find you sleeping. Sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get faint. But I want to say, even if you are feeling weak, the Bible says, Them that shall wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Learn the source of your strength. The source of your strength is not yourself. If you understand this, you'll always walk strong. The source of your strength, the Bible says, He upholds them that are falling. He upholds them that are backsliding. Even when you feel like giving up, there is a force that can hold you. There is a God whose hand can keep you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is no place of giving up in God. The Bible says that Sharika come and find you sleeping. You will rather find me awake. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go back to the pool. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when the angel would stop the waters, only one person would be healed. In that all season, only one person. The angel would stop the waters. And whoever will be the first to enter in, hallelujah, shall be healed. Hallelujah. What is it teaching us? One, for you to go to the pool, you must believe the word of God. There must have been a word spoken over the pool. God reveals what he is doing by his word. How did people know if you dip yourself in the pool, you'll be healed? There must have been a word. So the first thing before you go there, you must believe that actually an angel comes. Because you'll never see an angel. You'll see the movement of waters. Hallelujah. If you go there, you're looking to see the angel. You'll not see him. So you must believe. So I see in this folk, these people who are people of faith. They believe that when they come there, they'll be healed. They believe when I come and dip myself in the pool when the angel disturbs the water, I'll be healed. Hallelujah. And that's the beginning of every miracle. This is the beginning of everything God wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. You must believe. They have to believe that a certain season, and the people that seek, I mean people, they believed. I believe also. Hallelujah. 
that they were not just waiting there. They were speaking to God. When you believe God, when you believe his word, the next thing is speak to God about it. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a people who are sitting there saying, God, I believe what you said about the pool. And I'm waiting here for you to send your angel. And this time, God, allow me to be the first. God, help me. God, help me. I believe in your word. Hallelujah. They were praying and watching. Let, let the angel come and notice. The Bible says, pray and watch. Pray and watch. If you pray and you don't watch, your miracle will come and it will escape you. They would have prayed, God send the angel. But if they are not watching, the angel would come and stop the waters. Angekuja tu, na subwe machi, na ende, na kuya kuna mtu wa meona. It is possible. It's also possible that when I say in gear, you can come in into the deep water without faith and not get healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So they had to discern the move of God. In the days we are living in, we should discern the move of God. We should be able to know to jue nini mungu anatenda. What is God doing in our day? Because if you don't do, you sleep and miss out on his visitation. The Bible says Israel missed their visitation. They missed the master. They not understand. They not design that Jesus is Christ. Hallelujah. And that's what is happening to the church today. And I'll show you as we go. We can be in church and not design Jesus is around. You don't know he is around. And we live with our problems and live with our situations and go with them home, come with them on Sunday and rest that we get discouraged and give up. Hallelujah. Why was it that everyone was to be dipped was to enter by himself or either to enter only one person was healed. God is a God who wants to have a personal relationship. God is not a God of crowds. God is seeking you as a person to believe him and take a step of faith. Hallelujah. He is seeking you to believe him. Not that we go because there is a pool. All of us, we go into there and we are going to be healed. We can come to church and only one person gets healed. We can come to church and only one God person is whose doors are opened. If there is a person who can be watchful, who can be sensitive to the move of God. You are you know, you are waiting. Your heart is waiting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The pool may be disturbed by the weed. Maybe it's not the angel. Did you? Even weed can shake the waters. So if you are not discerning, you don't think it's an angel and you go in and you get healed. And you get discouraged. Hallelujah. We must have a heart, a church that discerns. Kanisa sikuizi. We need kupamanua. We need to know. When God is moving, we need to know. When God is doing, we need to know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Otherwise, you may miss our visitation. We must be able to design times and seasons. The angel came in certain times. The angel came in certain seasons. We must be able to design the time and season we are living in. If you are to see greatness and the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. The Bible says the children of Isaac are new times and seasons. And they knew what to do. If you want to prosper in life, you have to know what to do at what time. Hallelujah. There's a time and season for everything. Notice everything is time to do everything. And this is where prosperity comes in. If you want to increase. Maisha yako ipanuke, lazima ukue sensitive in the spirit. Unajua what to do at what time. The children of Isaka, they knew times and seasons. And they knew what to do at the right time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we get discouraged because you try to do things the wrong time. It is the right thing to do. But you don't know it's the wrong time. Hallelujah. If you walk in the spirit, you can know the right time and the, and, and the, and the, and the and, and time which is not right. When you discern you, whoever you discern the times will receive the power of God and do exploits.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says they all waited. They all wanted to be healed. But only one would be healed. Because the move of God was sporadic. It was haphazard. You could not predict. Hallelujah. And only one person will be healed. But I've come to say that we are in a different season. Hallelujah. A time is coming and is now that God is outpouring his spirit. I'm speaking prophetically and by faith that the time and season has come where God is outpouring his spirit. We do not need to wait for a, a sporadic, a one-time move of God in church. When you get one person healed in church, you are very happy. One, no. We are coming at a time and season when we shall see great move of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's going to be a move of God where we will witness great healing and miracles in our days. Hallelujah. I believe it with all my heart that the time and seasons are changing. There's a shift in the atmosphere and God is moving but only for those who are going to discern and to see what God is doing that they will partake of it. I pray that we may be open in the spirit. I pray that we may be able to discern what God is doing in our time. Hallelujah. Healing will not be sporadic. It will not be a one-time healing. But it will be the order of the day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the church must make itself ready. The church, we must make ourselves ready. The move of God can come and we don't get it. Hallelujah. Because God is not going just to a crowd. It's to our people who are watching and praying. It's that people can design the move of God and receive it. They will go enter into the pool at the right time. They will know God has come at his time. It is time. There were many sick folk, but only the one who will see will go in. Hallelujah. The church has been experiencing healing miracles, but God is setting up a move. Hallelujah. He is releasing a great grace and shall be great miracles in our day. Hallelujah. Those who by the pool and have faith. Hallelujah. This is the principle of God. Amen. God offers the hearing. God offers the miracle. But you have a responsibility. Mungu na piano uponyachi. Mungu na piano muujiza. Lakini kuna wajibika. Na hapo ni poatu wengi wanakosea. This is where we miss it out. Because you want to sit there and, and God heal me when I'm sitting there. It's okay. You can do that. God is sovereign God, but you have your responsibility. You want a miracle, yes, and you want to sit there, but you must do something. Hallelujah. Does it find a jambo? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has provided the means for you to be healed, but you must take action of faith. God has provided. He has provided the means for your miracle. But you must take, you must take a step of faith. You must believe what God has said about your situation. Hallelujah. The angel would disturb the waters. But there was no one to take responsibility. Come and get super magic, and there was no one to come in. The power of God would be wasted. The power of God is always present. And sometimes there are no miracles. Because there be somebody to take hold of God. The Bible says, is there somebody to get hold of the strength of God? You can take hold of God. Hallelujah. So is the word of God today. Isaiah 53, 4 says, Jesus has carried our sicknesses. He has borne our infirmities on himself. We consider him as one who is stricken by God. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter 2.24 says, By his stripes you are healed. But it's when we take the world, it is when we believe it and act on it, that we find the power of God working in our lives. Praise the Lord. The pool represents the word of God. The promise of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We must hear, believe the word and act on what it says. Hallelujah. We must dip yourselves in. We must meditate. We must believe it. We must dip ourselves in the world. Many times Christianity has been, let's go 
to church. Let us go be prayed by a man of God. Waja tuende kanisa tu katafute mtu anaweza kutuwekea mafuta ni vizuri. But you must now come to a place where you have a responsibility of reading the word, taking the word by yourself. Lazima ukwe na wakati wako wa kujua nani. You must have a time to interact with the world. Dip yourself inside. The dipping in the pool was a kind of baptism. Hallelujah. When you are baptized in Christ, every sickness must go. When you are baptized in Christ, every power of darkness must stop. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The children of Israel were baptized into Moses in the wilderness. Today we are baptized into Christ. Baptism means you are dipped. You are submerged inside. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The invalid man and stayed by the pool that eight years. This represents the church today. Hear me very well. This represents the church today. When I'm in the church, I'm not talking about denomination. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. The invalid man has been waiting for the move of God. Just the way the church has been waiting for the move of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He waited for a man. And the church has been waiting for a man. They can see. They have been waiting for a man to begin a move of God. But I'm telling you, it is not a man who came, it is Christ. And I come to tell you that Christ is coming for his church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christ is coming. The master is coming. And is telling the church to rise up and walk. The man was waiting for the moving of water. But Jesus came. He not even know Jesus as it is Christ. But he says, rise up. He says, do you want to be healed? He says, there's no man. And the church is saying, there's no man. There's no man to pray for us. There's no man to lay hands on us. But God is not waiting for a man. It is you he is seeking that you may rise up and take this opportunity. Hallelujah. That you may do great exploits. I decree that the master is coming and he is raising his church again to holiness and righteousness. The man by the pool was a sinner. Hallelujah. Everyone came and was getting healed. But there was no move in his life. When he got healed, the Bible says, they met with Jesus in the temple. And Jesus told him, go and sin no more. It's a time for the church to begin to walk in righteousness. It's a time for the church to be restored to holiness. And the move of God shall be felt to the nations. The master is coming to restore the church to righteousness. He's coming to restore the church to holiness. The church in a state cannot experience the move of God. It is time to discard things which are not of God. It is time to stay away from sin. It is time to walk holy. It is time to walk in righteousness. We are in the season of the move of God. And God is saying, I have come to tell you, arise and walk. Hallelujah. We must turn. The church must turn. He must turn. God cannot wait any longer. He has waited for a long time since there will be revival. We are waiting a long time since there shall be a move of God. We are waiting a long time since we are waiting to see the Holy Spirit. How many of the church today we are seeing the infilling of the Holy Spirit? How we are seeing as men and women riding up to be prayed for for healing, riding up to be prayed for for deliverance. Men who have been born again for years. But God is saying the time is coming. He is raising men and women who are going to do His purpose. God is tired of looking at these children. They are suffering many things like the woman where they show blood in the hands of many people purporting to do things to them. God is saying it is time that eight years the man was in varied. He could not walk but Jesus came and said it is time. He says do you want to be healed? And God is asking the church are you ready? He said, the church, you must rise up. The church, you must rise up. The church, you must discern. You must remove those clothes you have put on yourself. Or fornication and lottery. You must put off this, the, those, the, those clothes you are putting of lies and of hypocrisy. You must put those, those clothes you have put on tail bearing and gossip. And it's time that we must rise up. 
and be ready for the master and be ready for the move of God otherwise the move of God will come and we shall see nothing the move of God will come and this man will not be affected he was waiting for a man the church has been waiting for a man I hear people asking where shall we go for deliverance and they are born again for years where shall we go to be prayed for healing where shall we go which man of God is in town who can pray for deliverance they are moving from one church to another from one deliverance to another the other day a hand of a man who came and she told me pastor I was born again but I went for another to another church and, and I was prayed for because I was just seeking God and, and from that day I began to dream my smoking I began to dream myself drinking beer I began and now as I'm saying pastor I'm not in church because I'm a drunkard because I, I smoke because I take every kind of drug I take bangi he was seeking for a man to pray for him Hallelujah. God did not call you to be seeking for a man. He called you to wait on him. He called you to watch and pray. He called you to walk in righteousness and holiness. He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit and power. He wants to raise the church again to the place of glory. People are looking at the church in Ahurumiwa. When they hear you are born again, they think you made a mistake. When they hear you have received Christ, they think you have lost the way. Because people have not seen the power of God. The kingdom of God is not by word, but in power. It is not by enticing words of a man. But it's the demonstration of the spirit and power. That will make people know who our God is. It is when they see you refuse to be bright. When they see you to refuse to lie. When they see you refuse to be involved in that dark transactions and you say because I know the God I believe in and I see the power of God working in you then they will say we know God he is alive hallelujah glory to God I decree the master is coming and raising the church again to hold it as righteousness the spirit of the Lord is raising the church to walk again in power and authority he is raising the church again. Like the man who has been there. He is coming and telling the church, rise up and walk. And he is telling us, you rise up and walk, sit no more. We cannot afford to be in church and walk in unholiness. We cannot be to be in church and you have an extra wife you are keeping. We are not to be have to be in the church and all our, our, our tongue speak is lies. There's no difference between the church and the world. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We must know whom we serve. He is a holy and righteous God. He is a consuming fire. We cannot walk in fornication and say, we are born again. We cannot walk in lies and say, we are born again. 